Hello and welcome. It is time for a retrospective on 2021. Uh, hopefully this is being released on time for it to be relevant. Looking back at a whole year and trying to summarize it is maybe a fool's errand. I definitely get that vibe this year in particular, as 2021 in general was just a confusing mess, you know, is the pandemic over? Guess not. Is our political state any better? Guess not. Am I happy? Kinda? I'm, I'm alright. So trying to find an emotive through line to the year might be a problem, but at least in the world of recorded music, I thought 2021 was stellar. A lot of really fantastic album releases, a lot of really great debuts, most likely from the fact that people wanted to tour again and the coronavirus pandemic for a while there was seeming to die down, and in my attempt to fill out this list with the essentials, with everything I thought was definitely deserving of a placement on a year-end list, I was already in the 20s. So with this many entries to run through, I thought I would talk about the top 30 albums of 2021 in six words or less. Brackets, but when I actually get to the top of the list, I am gonna go a bit more in depth. I do want to lend more than six words to the art that really moved me this year. But in the spirit of keeping this video concise, let's just move into the list. Uh, here are the honorable mentions, which consist of albums that I either didn't really get enough time to listen to to fully form an opinion on for this list, or albums that I like but I had to cut to keep it to 30. I would recommend to listen to any of these as well as a listen to anything on the list that might pique your fancy. I think they're all pretty great. And if any album isn't here that you think it deserves to be here, uh, comment on it down below while crying about it because my opinion is just more better than yours. All right, let's get into the top 30. At number 30, we have Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars' Silk Sonic on An Evening with Silk Sonic. It is endearing and comedic golden age soul. Number 29, it is Kill Bill the Rapper with Snow Globe Theory. Bedroom Rap King's understated and Dark Return. At number 28, it is Z-Loopers with Van Gogh's Left Ear, a collection of uproarious bangers from another galaxy. And at number 27, it is Backwash with I Lie Here Buried With My Rings and Dresses, music genetically engineered to scare hoes. At number 26, it is Slow Tie with Tyron, inside Slow Tie There Are Two Wolves. And at number 25, it is Nigerian guitarist Mdu Mokhtar with Afrique Victime, anti-colonial rock hypnotism. At number 24, it is low with, hey, what? Crashing waves of noise rock bliss. Number 23, it is Little Ugly Mane with the release of Volcanic Bird Enemy and The Voiced Concern. Downtrodden sample collages drunk circus vibes. I love music criticism, you can just say words. At number 22, it is Sky Zoo with All the Brilliant Things, old school hip hop, still alive. And rounding out our first third at number 21, it is Danny Elfman with Big Mess, giving us some high octane liberal doomerism. Kicking off our top 20, it is the debut of Black Country New Roads for the first time, societally anxious and densely arranged neo kraut rock. At number 19, it is Bad Bad Not Good with Talk Memory, more like Good Good Pretty Great. Got him. At number 18, it is Japanese Breakfast with Jubilee, intimate and emotive indie pop bops. At number 17, it is Black Dresses with Forever in Your Heart. Real <laughs> girl hours. And at number 16, it is Brockhampton with Roadrunner, New Light, New Horizons, California boy band's most experimental work yet. At number 15, it is Porter Robinson with Nurture, reconstructing nostalgia through digital processing. At number 14, it is Genesis Ousu smiling with no teeth, unhinged and anthemic power pop. At number 13, it is Magdalena Bay's Mercurial World, absolute crack for TikTok users. At number 12, only at number 12, God God damn, it is Floating Points, Pharaoh Sanders, and the London Symphony Orchestra with Promises. -da 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 -da. That's the whole album. That's, that's, that's seriously the entire album. Wait, let me do it again. -da 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 -da. 
Hell yeah. At number 11, it is Black Midi with Cavalcade. Black Midi is keeping rock unpredictable. And kicking off our top 10, it is Tyler the Creator with Call Me If You Get Lost. Mr. Baudelaire stunts on isolation and heartbreak. At number 9, it is St. Vincent with Daddy's Home, a 70s pastiche that highlights cultural growth. At least that's how I choose to interpret it. Thankfully, this is my video. Number eight, it is Spelling with The Turning Wheel, spellbinding and wondrously arranged art pop. At number seven, it is UK singer-songwriter Richard Dawson with the Finnish rock band Circle on the album Hanky, giving us imposing and mesmerizing art prog majesty. At number six, it is Little Sims, Simbi with Sometimes I Might Be Introvert. Kind of a difficult album to condense into six words. It is an album Album where Little Sims faces off with all of the drama that her success has brought her, not only in the public sphere, but in reflections to her own life, to experiences of people who are close to her. It is a beautiful album on which Sims rigorously details how external struggles become internalized. And at number five, kicking off our top five, it is... Left at London with T-I-A-P-F-Y-H. Left at London is the musical project by singer, songwriter, producer, internet folktale, and S-tier Twitter account Nat Puff. There is a place for you here, or this is a protest for your heart. Either of these sayings are embodied on the titular acronym to Left at London's debut album, and given the nature of its titular sayings, it is a very emotionally understandable album, one that seeks to offer advice or at least many different stories on navigating a world that is bleak and often terrifying. From the Ballad of Marion Zajancek, a piano piece which details the life and times of the senator who was trying to push for the New Deal, to There is a Place for You Here, which welcomes the listener into a sonic refuge from the outside world, to the 10-minute anthemic opener Pills and Good Advice, a stunning, proggy blend of hyperpop and indie folk. Nat's production chops, as she displays on this album, is leaps and bounds above what was on her early EPs, just mesmerizing throughout the explosive and bombastic drum samples, the myriad of vocal processing techniques that she uses across each one of the songs. It is a tour de force and one that flew maybe a bit under the radar, but I imagine in most people looking back at the music of this year, this album will definitely stand out. Not only is Nat's songwriting just catchy and inventive and just awe-inspiring throughout, but the emotional core of this album feels like a soft refuge from a tumultuous world. I think it is definitely deserving of more acclaim. Left at London's T-I-A-P-F-Y-H is an uncertain embrace for your soul. Number four. Horsey, debonair. What a raucous and hilarious and bombastic debut from British art rock band Horsey. Britain's art rock scene has been a softly dominating force in 2021's musical landscape, not only giving us the powerhouse sophomore album from Black Midi and the highly anticipated debut of Black Country New Roads, but also a debut from a group of independent underdogs closely associated with King Cruel, the best of the bunch, was Horsey's Debonair. The first I heard of it was actually in a video for this channel where I was drawn in by the appearance of Archie Marshall on the last track of the album Seahorse. And while King Cruel's music can be often downtrodden and depressive reflections on the outside world, Horsey as a band seemed to represent that conflict almost in the complete opposite direction while sarcastically asserting that everything is fine. And this album was the one that captured my attention and really made me appreciate the group. Their strange co-opting of prog rock and lounge jazz, their wild and sarcastic comedic energy, the intensity of each of their performances, especially lead singer Jacob Reed, who belligerently screams his lyrics like a coked-out uncle at your 12th birthday party. The comedic style of this album is 
in my view, almost emblematic of toxic masculinity, or at least some type of mind frame that seeks to assert everything is all right while visibly imploding. The lyrics desperately search for a meaning to life and love while rampaging through violent outbursts that undercut these ideas at every turn, and the entire quartet has the musical chops to match that intensity and absurdity. It is an album that seeks to angrily portray a perverse and unloving world as raucous fun and noticeably collapses while doing so. The musical ideas are so out there, so brilliant, so inventive. The track list is all killer, no filler. For my money, it's the best rock album of 2021. Number three. JPEG Mafia, LP. What really can be said about JPEG Mafia at this point? If you know him, there's already a chance that he's one of your favorite artists. He's certainly one of mine. After bursting onto the scene in 2016 with Black Ben Carson, <laughs> fantastic album title still to this day, Peggy has established himself as an unavoidable presence in internet rap culture, not only through his bratty and mischievous attitude, but also through dropping absolutely nothing but classics for the past five years. And LP is a victory lap in many ways for Peggy, the lyrics and performances often being a celebration of himself, his creativity, and what he's been able to achieve in the past five years of his career, which really isn't a long time in the grand scheme of things. And to carve out this niche sound for himself in such a defined way on this album is also really admirable. The way that the music is so spontaneous and just follows whatever whim Peggy has, how free and uninhibited all of the verses, all of the progressions, and all of the song structures are, it's really a sight to behold. There is nobody doing what JPEG Mafia is doing right now, and this album is a demonstration of that in full force. I love the production all over this album. The sampling is fantastic. On songs like Are You Happy and Hazard Duty Pay and OG, Peggy's lyrics are hilarious, they're bratty, they're braggadocious, they're fun. Of course the mixing and mastering is just mwah. And the entire track list on this album, specifically the offline version, just flows so well, it feels so lucid. It is the cherry on top of JPEG Mafia's already brilliant discography. In my opinion, it's his best work yet. And after dropping this many classic yeah, I definitely think Peggy is at greatest of all time status. So I guess this review is essentially saying three cheers for Peggy, the goat. At number two, we have what I was certain upon first listening to it was going to be my album of the year, only barely being edged out by something that came along later. That is Lingua Ignota's Sinner Get Ready, a brilliantly terrifying album that mixes Appalachian folk influence with hymnal music, with classical compositions. It really softens the punch from absolutely terrifying odysseys like Caligula and All Bitches Die, and in my opinion it's Kristen's most accessible album yet to what degree any of her music can be called accessible. Sinner Get Ready is a meditation on the nature of religious abuse. Not only the people who seek to pervert the messages of Christianity to suit their own needs, but at the same time how abusive power dynamics are imbued to the religion itself, with the constant imagery of feeling powerless and worthless and subservient to this almighty righteous force. It's an album that really highlights not only how this abusive nature is imbued into religious messaging, but into the messaging of American imperialism itself, a lot of its setting being placed in rural Pennsylvania. Not only is this album thoughtful and philosophically engaging, but at the same time her musical vision and her vocal capability especially are just incomparably brilliant throughout this entire experience. It's meshing of influences and Kristen's vocal performance, which I can only describe as flawless. This album is brilliant, powerful, imposing, and if I were to sum it up in six words, it feels like biblically accurate angels manifested through sound. And ending off this list, uh, it is my number one pick for the year. It is an album which is contextually kind of difficult to deal with but in my opinion is just so forward-thinking, so moving, so new, so fresh in the world of hip-hop. I am talking about Injury Reserve, By the Time I Get to Phoenix, 
I won't actually say too much here because I am currently in the middle of working on another video which will allow me to go into this album more in depth. I understand if you are somebody who is a fan of Injury Reserve but couldn't necessarily get into this album due to the context that surrounded its release, the tragic loss of key rapper Jordan Alexander Groggs, but just in its production, how it co-ops so many different genres, meshes them into these ambient soundscapes, and Richie's poetry being as free, as loose, as uninhibited, and as manic as it is on so many songs across the album, each track feeling like its own separate environment in this constant storm. It is a masterful work in modern rap, and one that I see as becoming a blueprint for experimental rap in the 2020s. It is an experience that is completely novel and fresh in its conceptualization of rap music. It is brilliantly uninhibited and in indulgent and pulls off each of its experimentation with flying colors. Emotionally, it hits like a brick and how depressive and confusing it can be at times really just summarized a lot of the year for me. Injury Reserve, by the time I get to Phoenix, to me, this is unquestionably the shape of rap to come. And those are my top 30 albums of 2021. Again, I will reiterate, I thought 2021 was a great year for recorded music. It's actually inspired me to uh, write a fair deal of different stuff. Hopefully I get those out. I never know with this channel. I promise videos at the end of videos and I never deliver, but I'm starting to get into it more and hopefully there will be a good amount of content. Yay, content! Hopefully there will be a good amount of content on this channel in the future. I love talking about music, and I love making dumb jokes and gags, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe so you can stick along to this journey with me, and make sure you give a listen to any of the albums here that piqued your fancy, that grabbed your attention, that gripped your grundle, as I think all of them, including the honorable mentions, are worth your time. So yeah, that's it from me for this video. Uh, thank you so much for sticking to the end of it. You've been tuned in to 93.5 Friendship Station. My name is Alex, and I hope you have a lovely day.